Peace with Needles and Fashion. I'm here with, in collaboration with Fabric Mart Fabrics to bring you a tutorial of Vogue 1416 View B, which is the pants. So without any other delay, let's go ahead and start with our supplies. The first thing you're going to need is your pattern, Vogue 1416. We're going to cut View B as I indicated already. You're going to need your fabric, of course, your interfacing, a hook and eye, a seven inch uh, zipper, and you're also going to need a 5 8 of an inch button, just one. You're also going to need to use the essentials, your scissors, your rotary cutter, and or um, your gray line ruler, and some marking chalk or marking um, pencils. So um, to spare you some of, with some of the details, I went ahead and I cut out my fabric pieces. I'm going to show you a couple of the adjustments that I made to the pants, but I went ahead and cut out all the other pieces. I attach the fusible interfacing already, so we don't have to go through those tedious details. So, for the pants, um, these pants have a little bit of a bell bottom shape to it. I'm not really fond of bell bottoms per se. So I made some adjustments to the pants with at the bottom. Also, I went ahead and added six inches to the length. I like to be in control with the, of the length of my pants. Because I'm doing this with a lightweight denim, I want to make sure, one, that I was able to create a pretty heavy hem and also um, a longer hem that will um, reach right over my shoes and slightly kiss the ground. That's kind of how I wear my white leg pants. Other than that, everything else will be by the pattern okay so let's go ahead and start with the first part of this pattern construction we've already completed step one so now we're going to move on to step two step one was just putting the interfacing on the wrong side of the facings and other uh, pieces that you have not this has nothing to do with the pants leg and also you're not going to attach the interfacing to piece number 12 yet so let's move on to instruction. Okay, so the first part of the instructions is for you to cut off the zipper flap on the left side, um, the left front pants. So this is the left front. I went ahead and marked my uh, well pocket. I marked my dart as well as all of my notches on this pattern. So the last thing that I need to do for this left leg is to cut off this zipper flap. You're gonna do that because there's gonna be a separate piece for the zipper that you're going to attach for the left side. So I'm just going to cut that off. And that's done. So we have that piece gone. And the next thing we're going to do is to stitch our dart. And we're going to go ahead and reinforce the corners of the welt. So you're going to reinforce the top between both circles and about an inch down on both sides. You're also going to repeat that on the bottom part of the welt. So we're going to do that. We're going to come back and go on step to the next two step. is complete as well as step three and four. I went ahead and reinforced the welt here, as you can see, the top and on the bottom. I went ahead and, and did the same thing on the right side of the pants as well. And I also sewn my dart. and pressed it to the side. So we have step four completed. We have the reinforcements and we have the dart completed. Now we're going to work on cutting the welt, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and according to the instructions, you're just going to slash along the line between the stitching, right? And that's this area here. So I'm just gonna use my quilts and scissors here and I'm going to slash right up into the small circles. And this is that triangle that is on your welt. I'm gonna do that on both sides. And that is done. Very simple to do, very easy to do um, when you're cutting with a very sharp quilting scissor. So, um, you're going to also cut 
your line in the middle as well. So we're going to do that. I can use my scissors once I make that hole. Right up into your diagonals. So now your welt is open and ready for you to attach it uh, to the, the front yoke pieces. So we're going to go ahead and get the next step prepped and go through the instructions for um, instruction uh, parts number six and seven. And eight. Okay, so now that we have um, instruction number five completed, we're going to move on to number six. The first thing you're going to need to do is finish the edges of number seven which I've done with my serger. I've always also finished the edges of my front pieces. I'm gonna do the back once we get to that portion. The instructions tell you to line up your number seven piece with the lining of number eight. So this is the lining of the pocket. So I have my notches and I have my um, small and large circles already marked along also I have the, the stitch line marked on both pieces as well. So I'm gonna get my pins and I'm gonna match up the small and large circles. And you're gonna do this with, the, with piece number seven right sides up. So I'm matching my circles here. You're also gonna be matching your stitch lines. That's another guide for you to be able to use. I'm just gonna pin that here and I'm going to line it up at the bottom as well. Make sure my small circles are lining up as well as the stitch line. And stick a pin in there. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. Sure everything is lined up. And I have these pinned. What you're going to do, um, that's number six for number seven. You're going to go over to your um, sewing machine and you're going to trim the welt seam. You're going to trim the welt seam um, allowance along the edge. You're going to take it to the sewing machine and you're going to... Um, stitch the edge here and that's going to attach your number seven to your lining so I'm going to trim off this edge here and it's approximately a quarter of an inch and you're going to do that for both sides And then you're going to go ahead and take it over to the sewing machine. So I'm going to do that. I'll come back. And it's time for us to move on to instruction number eight and nine. So this is where it gets a little bit difficult. Constructing weld pockets are pretty difficult and it can be pretty difficult for just about any level of sewer. Um, I'm going to do this. Um, along the uh, along with the instructions for this pattern, but if you want to look at some easier methods for using uh, for installing well pockets, you may want to check out some videos on YouTube. So I'm going to the first thing you're going to do is take your finished piece from step number six and seven. You cut off your um, you attach number seven to the lining. You left a quarter inch on the edge of that. You're going to line up that line for the quarter inch of piece number seven along the inner seam line uh, for the welt, which means the middle part of the welt, that flat piece that's closest to your crotch area or where your zipper will be installed. And you're gonna sew that quarter inch onto that flap. So that I did that here and you're going to press that towards the pocket. 
Now these are right sides together. So you want to make sure you're doing right sides together. So now that that portion is done, you're going to get the pattern piece for the pocket. And this is going into number nine, the right sides together. You're going to line your stitch line. And if you need to, like I did here, go ahead and mark it with your marking chalk where that stitch line is. You're going to match that stitch line with the stitch line of your welt. And it's right where you reinforced it and you're going to match your big circles together. So I'm just lining that there just to make sure I have it in place. And I'm going to match my stitch line with the stitch line of the welt. Make sure my big circles are aligned. And just for a sight reference, it's going to match the bottom of the lining. So now that I have that in place, I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to pin it right where my small circle is because you're going to sew right between the small circles. I'm going to get another pin here. And I'm going to line up that stitch line again just with the small circles. And I'm going to pin that down. Just making sure this is absolutely perfect. And putting that pin right exactly where I need it to go. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to sew right along this stitch line. And then we'll move on and show you exactly how the welt is coming together. All right. So I'm going to go to the sewing machine. And I'm going to be right back to show you what the next step so is going I to be. I have my pattern piece of the pocket sewn on. And I went ahead and turned the pocket inside out. So now I have the pants on the wrong side with the pockets folded in. And I have my welt openings pressed. The next thing you're going to do is flip your triangles up and press them on both ends. You're going to attach this triangle to the actual aligning piece. So just going to fold this over, find your triangle, which can be fairly small, and you stick a little pin in it. I'm going to do that on both ends. I'm going to take it over to the machine. You have to be very careful when you do this because the only part that you want to sew is the triangle onto the lining piece. So I'm going to take it to my machine with it folded up in this manner and then I'm going to sew that triangle on there. Again, this is a very difficult way to attach welt pockets by all means. If you feel like you need some more visuals, there are tons of videos uh, on um, doing welt pockets. I may actually put a couple of links um, on the bottom of this YouTube so that you can see some other methods of attaching welt pockets that I found very useful. So I'm going to do it in the manner that was designed for, this, for, the, um, for the instructions for this pattern. So I'm going to get my triangle sewn on to the, to the lining and I'm going to come back and show you how the welt pocket is coming together. So I went over to the machine and finished off my welt at the triangles and finished off the pockets along with searching the edges and we have two front welt pockets as you can see here this is the detail here of the welt now there's a couple other steps that you're going to want to do is um, to uh, finish off the edge here in that ditch um, to hold the welt in, play, in place uh, and that's going to be um, instruction number 13 um, all the way down to 16 so I went ahead and did those steps um, as well as 17 sorry which is finish off the pocket so the next thing I'm going to do is pin these fronts together at the notches Let's match this up here it and per the instructions you are going to sew between your square and your notch so your notch is going to be right here 
I'm just lining this up correctly. Actually, I have my square on the other side. So between my square and my notch, I'm going to go ahead and sew this section. Once we do that, we're going to move on into the actual zipper um, insertion. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch between my square and my notch. And I'll come I back. My um, front piece is sewn together from my square down to my notch. I turn in both sides at the fold line, which is indicated on the pattern piece, and I pressed it. So this is going to create the casing for your, uh, your for your zipper. And what you're going to do is, um, according to the, I have a seven inch zipper here. According to the instructions, you're going to shorten the zipper a bit. So what you're wanting to do is to um, place the zipper face up under, because I'm going to actually shorten the zipper after I make sure that it's long enough because. I don't want to make it shorter and then end up having to pull out a new zipper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you're going to place this zipper pull exactly one inch below the seam line, which is just the seam line here. So it's one inch below. So you can grab your ruler or your seam guide, whichever is closest to you. And that pull is going to be right here. So I'm going to mark that one inch. My chalk. That's where the pull is going to be. So you're going to start with um, instruction part number 20. I'm going to turn this over, right sides up. And I'm going to have this zipper closed, face up, and I'm going to put it under the opening of the, of the edge. So again, one inch below the seam line for my pull, which is here. And I'm just going to use that as a visual guide. And I'm going to begin to pin it. All the way down. And then remove these pins as I sew the zipper on. But I just want to give you a guide of how I'm going to Place this in. I'm just going straight down the fold line. Now, if you have your own methods of inserting a zipper, you can do that by all means. And the zipper stop is going to be where your big circle is. So I'm going to Use that for measure, and then I'm going to shorten the zipper after or before I actually attach the zipper to the pants. So I have that sewn. Here's my zipper stop, zipper stop, and it actually stops at my circle, so I may not have to do much adjustment to it. So I'm going to take this to the sewing machine. I'm going to actually sew. Uh, I'm going to baste this zipper here in place. Once I do that, we're going to um, work on piece number six which is the flap that's going to go under it. And that's this piece here. So I'm going to take this to the machine. I'm going to baste this zipper in place and we're going to go on to step number, um, the rest of 20 and then start on 21. Well, I have right. my zipper basted to the left side of the pants and this is the side without the fly. The next thing you're going to do is take your piece number nine, not six, and you're going to finish the straight edge of the two pieces, remember one is interfaced, you're going to sew along the curved edge all the way around to the front. You're going to clip off the edges down to about a quarter inch and you're going to um, understitch the side of the fly front that is does not have the interfacing. So once you do that, you're going to turn it inside out and you're going to press it and this is what the finished piece will look like. Once you do that, you're going to align this with your 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 um, unfinished seam, uh, excuse me, unfinished top of your pants and you're going to pin it.
all the way down. And as you can see, that gives you the fly front here. So what I'm going to do with this here is I'm going to base along the same line from the top all the way down to the small circle, which is where I basted it before. So because this is just a base step, I'll be able to pull this out and I'm going to put another stitch here in the same place to attach this piece to the actual pants. So I'm going to do that and come back and then we're going to start with putting the zipper onto the right side. Okay, so now that we have the left side of the, of the um, zipper fly already constructed, we're going to go ahead and work on the right side. So I went ahead and pinned through the single layer my zipper with the zipper open all the way down. You can go ahead for measure and close your zipper to make sure everything aligns. For the instructions, you want to fold down the top of your zipper flap and pin it so it's not loose. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and attach this piece and then the zipper is going to be completed. So we have a lot more to do so I'm going to go do this real quick and then we'll move on to the next step which is working Time on to start working back. on your back welt placement. So I have my welt already um, drawn out from my pattern I went ahead and reinforced the edges of the stitches the same way we did with the front. I went ahead and sewed the dart and um, pressed it towards the center. So that's already done. And um, what we're going to do next is we're going to take num piece number 11. What you're going to do is you're going to fold it right sides, I mean, wrong sides together. You're going to stitch about a 5 eighth of an inch stitch along the end and then cut down number 11 to a quarter of an inch. And this goes exactly by the instructions on the pattern. So that's already done. So now that I have that cut down to a quarter inch, I'm going to match my big circles here. And I'm going to match my stitching line with the bottom stitching line of the welt. So matching my circles. I'm going to pin this down on the right side and I'm going to go to the left making sure those stitch lines are matched. I'm going to pin that down. For a visual measure, your quarter of an inch is going to stop right along that middle line of the welt. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, I'm going to sew this down and then we're going to start working on piece number 12 which is the welt facing. You want to make sure that you finish all the edges with your serger, which is already done here. And we'll get onto that piece once I finish sewing this piece on. Now so I'm going to base my back welt, back welt attached, sewn between the small circles. I'm going to go ahead and place the back welt onto um, the welt facing onto the same area. I already have my welt drawn out on my pattern piece. And I'm going to align the stitch line on the bottom to the stitch line for the uh, back welt, I'm going to match that up and pin it. I'm going to pin this in three places just to make sure that line is extremely straight. Okay, so we have that piece on. I'm going to stitch along the lower stitch line on the welt, which is going to match the stitch line that I already did for the back welt. So the facings will be attached. So I'm going to do that and then we're going to come back and we're going to actually my, cut open um, my welt facing attached to the back, which is attached also to the actual welt. I'm going to fold this over and I'm going to open up the welt for the back. Using the same small scissors, I'm cutting right to the small circles, which is the corner of the welt.
make sure you get right to that corner. It's very important without going through your stay stitch and you use that as a guide. Now that I have that done, I can open up the remainder of the welt. Right along that line in the middle. Okay, so now that I have that open up, I can go ahead and turn the, the welt and the welt facing inside out. So I'm going to do that. You already have your facing on the other side. that all the way through you want to make sure that you press that down and we're just about through but we have just want to give you a view of on how the other sides look so I'm going to get my instructions out and we're going to start on placing the pocket. So now that we have the welt turned inside, we're going to do like we did with the front and we're going to take the triangles and we're going to sew it to the welt. Not to the welt um, facing, but to the welt. So I'm going to pin that in place and take it over to the sewing machine. What I'm going to do while I'm there, so once I have those attached, I'm going to sew the upper edge of the welt here to the to the uh, welt facing so I'm going to do that I'm going to come back and show you how the so I went ahead and stitched my triangles down to the um, to the welt and then went ahead and stitched the upper part of the welt to the welt facing what that does is give you your welt this is a non-working pocket but you can get the visual of how it's supposed to look I think it came out pretty good so what we're going to do now is we're going to take our pants, put the back sides together, we're going to pin it at the crotch and we're going to sew it down the, um, um, down the inner crotch and then we'll move on to the next step. I'm going to go ahead and finish this back piece first and then go ahead and sew the front and I mean the, the two backs together. So I'll be right back because we're going to start. Um, going towards attaching the front and the back pieces together and then we'll go on to the Now we're going to discuss the what's probably the easiest part of this entire pattern which is putting the front and back pieces together. So after you finish with your back pieces what you're going to do is you're going to attach the front to the back and you're going to start at the crotch. Sew the crotches together for one, for one side and then the other. You have to remember when you're putting your zipper you attach your two front pieces together. So you're going to, one, at, one at a time you're going to attach the back to the front from the crotch and then from the side. So you want to do that for both legs and you can have them together. The last part of this is you're going to stick your leg inside, right, right size out to the leg that's right size in. And you're going to pin them together. You're going to start with your center seam pin there first and then I'm going to work my way out so I'm going to pin here where the zipper is matching my notches I'm going to work my way on out here Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine. I'm going to do a double layer of stitches um, because this is the actual crotch area. I don't want to have any mishaps. So I'm going to do a double stitch here from the back to the front and over again. So once we do that, then we'll be ready to try a garment on and then we're going to start on the actual waist portion. So we're in the eighth inning, so we're almost there. So I'm going to go do this, this, do this okay, portion. So now, now that you have your pants just about assembled, you have all your legs together and you have your crotch seam sewn. You're going to go ahead and do an e-stitch around the edge, which I have done. Okay. 
And that's going to be between the notches in the front. So you're not going to do that area. You're going to put pieces 13 and 14 together. You're going to make sure that you take the right side and cut it down because the right side and the left side is going to be different lengths. So make, be sure that you pay attention to your pattern piece. So 13 is going to be cut down just a little bit on the right side. So you want to attach 14 um, to 13. So you have the right side and the left side. You're going to fold it under a quarter of an inch and sew it, which I have done here. So that portion of it is done. Now we're going to attach it to the pants. So I'm going to take the left side here. And I'm going to pin it. The first thing I'm going to do is sew. This is the extension. So I'm going to sew down this line here. And I'm going to then go around the pants. I'm being careful to adjust my ease where needed. And then we're going to be like almost done with the waist. So I'm going to pin this all the way around, adjust my ease, and I'm going to take it over to the sewing machine. And I'm going to attach this piece. And okay, I'm going to be so back. I went and ahead you. and I stitched the facing on the inside of the pants, as you can see here. I went ahead and stay stitched after I um, after I attached the um, facing on the outside and also finished it off with my serger. So I went around and did that. Turned it on the inside, gave it a good pressing, and this area is now complete, with the exception to your hook and eye. So I'm going to take my hook and eye, you're going to place the hook right along that basting line for um, your zipper. So you're going to put the hook there, I mean the eye there, and then place the hook naturally where your, um, your fold is in the front. So I'm going to do that. Really quickly, I'm also going to place the button. The button hole is going to go right here in this area and the button on the inside. I'm going to install that. I'm not going to use a 5 eighth of an inch button. I'm actually going to use a quarter of an inch um, because of the space I have. I want to make sure that it fits fairly snugly. So I'm going to use a quarter of an inch, but we're pretty much finished here. I'm going to I'm still need to tack them down. I'm going to do that by hand uh, at the darts so that the facing stays down. Uh, and then we're done. I'm going to, once I put my hook and eye and my button on, I'm going to try my pants on with the heels that I intend on wearing it, flipping it up, and then adjusting my fit so that my my pants hit the floor. And that's the last steps. Um, that's pretty much what we had to do. So um, this is Janice with Needles and Fashion, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial that I'm doing in collaboration with Fabric Bart Fabrics. I hope that you come back, press the like button, and visit my blog, www.needlesandfashion.com, and also www.fabricmartfabrics.com. I'll see you guys later.